I haven't posted an update in a couple of weeks since Adam the Woo came and visited me in Vegas, and I know everybody's been wondering what I've been up to. So, this is just a general update of what's happening uh, in the world of Video Bob. Well, I'm back at my shop here in Dallas, Texas, doing some work. There's the ambulance. I've been living in that thing for the last week in the camper. You've seen the videos that I posted before. If you haven't, you can go back and watch them. That's my new Ram 3500 truck. Trust me, we will be doing some videos on this truck. This thing is sick. Um, we're gonna be doing all kinds of things because we've been hot riding this thing, fixing it up, spent a ton of money on this thing. And, and uh, it's, just, it's just the tits, man. This thing is, it's a 2020 Ram 3500 Laramie. It's got like all the options. It's pimp. I mean, it's like a Rolls Royce truck. So we'll definitely be talking about that. We're going to be doing a lot of videos on that. And, and unfortunately for some of you who don't like truck content, you're going to be getting a lot of truck content. The ambulance, you know, I've been staying in this thing. As you know, I set it up as a camper. And if I, if I come in here, uh, you can see where I've been living. Yep. It's my home away from home. What a mess, right? Lay in this bed here. Watch TV. Got a microwave, fridge. Sit here on my computer and edit, drink some lemonade, you know, just chill. I mean, it's pretty small little apartment, but considering there's people who go to jail and live in way less comfort than this for their whole lives, it's not that bad. But, uh, you know, I've got the mini split up there so it stays nice and warm and nice and cool, nice and whatever. Got some nice carpet. This bed is like 14 inches thick, so it's nice and soft. I've got internet in here. Um, like I said, it's a mess because I've been living in here for a week. I need to clean it up. But, um, you know, it's what it is. So since I sold my house here in Dallas, I decided that I needed to, I, you know, I don't want to live in a, in, a, in a camper when I'm here. Because I come here for about a week or two uh, every other month to check on things. The place is a mess because I'm not around to bitch at people about cleaning up. Anyway, I had this bright idea. I go, hey, let's take the bay where my office is and turn it into like an apartment. It only costs a couple thousand bucks, right? <laughs> yeah. So basically this bay, which used to be mostly empty, which now has the uh, Lamborghini. There's a kit up there being worked on. This car lift needs to go. So we decided to build this 16 by 16 box in this bay. <clears throat> because I already had my office here. This is where I live bro broadcast from when I'm here, and then I have a bathroom over there. So this would have been a big open room. So I said, let's just enclose it, right? No big deal. So that's what we did. Since I have my office, you know, you guys have seen my office here. This is, and there's just stuff piled in here. It's just a mess, right? This is where I hang out and broadcast from. But it's where I do paperwork, you know, my QuickBooks. So this bathroom was already here, but we're modifying it. So, you know, we're installing this shower pan. I actually had a shower in here, but we had gotten a lot of water damage coming from this uh, wall, all right? So if you look, you'll, you'll notice that this interior wall is almost a foot away from the exterior wall because we kept having water coming down this wall. So we sealed up the top, we sealed it up so it's not getting water through. And then we also concrete sealed it chemically uh, but as a barrier, we decided rather than attaching this wall to that wall, we gave a gap. And we're going to use this door as a pathway to run um, plumbing. This I was washing clothes with this thing. I had this little portable washer-dryer hookup came out of an RV. Anyway, so the way this is going to run, for those of you who do construction, you can see that the pipe's gonna come out of the back of that shower, goes through here, and it goes through the wall back there, out the back into a, uh, into a clean out that we put a P-trap in. So the idea here, look through here, is that we're gonna have washer dryer, sink, six foot table, fridge, cabinets, right? So we wired each of these receptacles are on their own separate, um, breaker that light switch will run up to a light that will exist here one day there's going to be a ceiling fan operated from that switch tv is going to hang there so when this is all done 
We're using green rock, as they call it, which is a mold resistant, soundproof type of rock, sheet rock we're putting on this back area because if we do encounter any water or moisture, uh, we wanna try to prevent that from damaging the sheet rock. We used you know, hard foam back there as a backing. It'll be filled with insulation. The rest of this is interior, basically, inside this warehouse. So you got a room inside of a room. Decided to put a 36 inch exterior steel door here. That way I can get large items through here. And it's also gonna help uh, with insulation. So we gotta get this all taped and mudded and whatnot. So I'm gonna put like a 60, 70 inch TV here with a little you know, console there. And then a wardrobe in that corner. Then my bed will come right out here. Queen size bed will be right in the middle, right there. Where, where I'm standing will be like an easy chair. We're gonna carpet all this. This area here will be all kitchen. So there'll be a pathway that runs all the way from the door to the kitchen. And then, like I said, a fridge right there where that shower door is, countertop, and then like, you know, microwave, toaster, oven, coffee maker, blah, 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 cabinets with pantry and things, wash machine, bathroom. Uh, what we're doing here, this little fan here. So basically I have a, over there in their box, I have a mini split. Mini split is gonna go right there. That's what that 220 drop is. Mini split. <clears throat> this fan is gonna go above the door on a switch and it will blow the cold and or warm air from the mini split into the bathroom when the door is closed. Now I already have a heater and exhaust fan up in the ceiling. So um, we're gonna put a little sink vanity here, the door, glass doors, door will open, you know, this way, that's the plan. This will be a nice shower and uh, it's a small shower. <laughs> Honestly, but you know, listen, I'm not gonna live here permanently. It's just so I could stay overnight for a couple of nights when I come to town. And then when I sell the building or whatever, uh, it'll become an office. You just take the household stuff out. It'll be a break room or whatever. We can still store things up here. I know people always pause my videos to look at all the crap I have. So I'll just, I'll give you a good chance to look at all my crap of which there is much. Yes, much crap. Taking a tour of all the crap in my warehouse. We're gonna have to get rid of just tons of this stuff, just tons of it. This is my new easy chair. Well, we're gonna, I'm gonna talk about this here in just a second. This is our production room here where we work on, you know, like here's some vents we're building for a time machine. And this is where we do sanding and things. Just bought a fifth wheel adapter for the truck. It's a heavy some days. Um, but this is like a, our guy Omar, he, he, he makes this stuff. So for instance, on the time machine, you can't get these hoses very easily. So what we did was we took the originals, filled them with resin to harden them, and then we made molds of them. So this is a hand painted hose. It looks like a real hose, doesn't it? These all look like genuine hoses, but they're actually just plastic that's been hand painted. Just like these parts, it's plastic. And then he's pretty good at, at painting this stuff to make it look legit. This is our main assembly area. I don't have the lights on in here, but it's daytime. So, And in this spot is where we build our time machines. You've seen in many, many of my videos, the things that we've done here. But, you know, we use it to work on whatever. So uh, this will give you a hint of some of the things we're doing to the truck. We basically bought everything that Amp, uh, Amp Research makes and banks. So everything that you can get from banks and Amp Research we put on the truck. It's my new oil drain for the truck. This easy chair, uh, I, I plan on doing a whole video about this chair because this is the base of the chair. Let me move these out of the way. It's called a Herman Miller Eames lounge chair. Now, a real one of those costs like eight grand or something retarded. So I bought like a replica one that looks like this, right? This is the style of the chair. You've probably seen these. I love, but, but look at what they say. Whatever you do, do not Michael Jackson hee hee on the edge of the chair. No break dancing. And then whatever this woman is doing, don't sit on the edge. I don't know who that is. I just thought that was the most hilarious instructions ever. So we're gonna assemble this chair. We're gonna do a video about this chair because 
It's epic. Most comfortable chair I ever sat in in my life. Trust me on that. We're not, there's gonna be uh, some, some awesome truck content coming on this thing. Um, so be prepared for that. Just went and picked this up yesterday. It's a 100 gallon tank. We're gonna mount in the back of this thing, 100 gallons. So that'll give me 150 gallons of travel. Just put a BMW hitch on there. We'll talk about what I paid for it and all of the good, cool stuff in there. It's got the uh, pop out amp steps, pop right out as soon as you open the door. I look up, it's already a mess, I'm a slob. But just the quality of the, the materials, the Alcantara with the carbon fiber and the soft touch leather and the stitching and the, the perforated seats that are heated and cooled that have the Alcantara mixed with the piping. And I just feel like, you know, and we're gonna get into this when I do the video, but there's just not another interior as nice as the, you know, the upper level trims of these Rams of the Laramie and the Limited. I mean, you can get a Tradesman for a whole lot less, but I mean, this is the night edition, blacked out headliner, blacked out, no, they took all the chrome out, you know? And, uh, watch this. Is that sick? Okay, got a scuff. I didn't do that. Previous owner did that. I know better. But yeah, the uh, lack of chrome, I think, is a whole different vibe that people are into nowadays. This is the 6.7 liter Cummins, and, and um, it's just a beast. There's nothing it won't haul. I mean, it's just, you know, we're doing the banks, everything. I don't have my key with me, of course. But this, um, I wonder if it'll do something if you just try. No, it won't. But this 12-inch screen is on. Uh, why anybody would get one of these without the 12-inch screen, especially with the Apple CarPlay? We're going to get into all this. I, I, I've been driving this thing around a couple of days, and I am blown away by this truck. This thing is a Rolls-Royce. I mean, and... Uh, don't even get me started how much this thing cost. Yeah, most of you guys already know that these trucks, you're talking like $100,000 for a truck like this. Now, you know me. You know I didn't pay retail for this truck. Truck is used, slightly used. We're going to get into all that much later, but I bought it for about half of that. And um, I've already dropped at least ten grand in goodies on the thing. But um, I needed to be able to haul stuff and... You know, the ambulance is super cool, but those trucks are governed. They won't go more than 65, 70 miles an hour. They just won't. And my Ford Excursion, which has the legendary 7.3 liter turbo diesel, which we all know will go for a million miles all day long, but it'll do it slow. I mean, with a bumper pull, you can only pull about 10,000 pounds and uh, you're only gonna be going about 65 miles an hour. Truck like this can haul, um, this, a truck like this can haul up to 35,000 pounds with 1,000 pounds of torque, you know, and um, can do it at 80, 90 miles an hour. I see these trucks blasting past me out in the desert, literally going 80, 90 miles an hour with eight cars on their back. So me pulling a little trailer with, with 10,000 pounds in it or something, pff, effortless in this thing. Also, the the again, I don't want to spend too much time on the truck. I, I, I knew I was going to do this. But one of the main reasons I bought this thing was because it has adaptive cruise control and the lane assist. So it's damn near self-driving out on the highway. So like, you know, I mean, you, you it's not self-driving like a Tesla, but it'll slow itself down to a stop and then continue and keep itself within the lane. And on a boring ass 1200 mile drive through the desert where the road is just straight for hundreds and hundreds of miles without a single bend, that just makes it so much easier. And having heated, cooled seats, heated steering wheel, the best sound system, big screen, all of the different information, the ability to monitor every single function of this truck from the temperature of your exhaust to, to the temperatures of everything that has fluid in it, being able to control and see all of those things, being able to um, just have a comfortable, easy ride, and you're not stressing out over whether or not you're overdoing or overheating anything it's it's a it's just a it's just a, a different experience and if i was a you know over the road not an over the road trucker that's like a professional trucker but if i was a hot shot trucker this is the truck to have sure you could get the tradesman which is the lesser version that's just got you know the same power and motor just doesn't have all the features 
but the features I think are what make it a wonderful experience, you know? Um, it is so quiet in this thing. When I start this thing up, you, you can't even hardly hear it running when you're in there. And the last Dodge Ram I had, which was a 1998 24 valve Cummins, you couldn't even hold a conversation sitting in that truck. And by the time you got out of it, you needed new kidneys, a new spine. I mean, it was so bumpy. It was so uncomfortable, so loud. I mean, it was powerful as hell, but it was just absolutely horrible to ride in. And this thing is a treat. So I can't wait to do my videos on this thing. And, um, you know, Doug DeMiro did a pretty good video on it, but I'm going to do a different one because I own the truck and it's different. These guys that just show up and review a vehicle that they don't own, that they didn't get to really drive around, that they've only seen for a day. I don't think those reviews are that good. It's better to get one from somebody who owns one. Anyway. All right, I will be selling this rig. This is a 2010 Duracell 4300 International. Uh, fire department ambulance runs drives great nothing wrong with it pretty low miles everything works uh, you can see on our previous videos how we set it up to be an off-grid living situation you know it has a 3000 watt inverter with 800 amps of, lith of uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries you can sit in this thing for days on a battery in total silence and you can plug it in it'll charge itself while you're driving down the road a lot of custom work has been done to it you know I probably put at least 10 grand into custom work. For instance, this um, mini split system that we put in here goes up inside. It's totally silent. Keeps this thing like an ice box or a warm box, whatever you want. Custom hitch install. My buddy Mike did. You know, these don't typically have hitches, but custom hitch and camera system. There's cameras there, cameras there, these extra lights. All the emergency lights and sirens still work as normal. But you know, I added other lights over here. Um, a, a secondary battery system in here, which hasn't been hooked up yet. But we're, we're the pro, the, we were in the process of relocating the batteries so that we could add an additional 50 gallon tank to the other side, which we have added power steps. Uh, and then the bathroom is gonna go in here. We've been working on this. Uh, there's going to be a sub floor that goes here. There's already a black tank. They're going to cut this out. It'll be a doorway and there'll be a toilet in there, believe it or not. You can just barely get in there. And then it's also come, I guess, with this trailer because we made the trailer match. It's designed to go with the thing. Power jack. It's a, I, think, I think it's a 24 or 26 pace American car hauler. And so what we did was we set it up so that, you know, all the emergency lights and stuff match the ambulance. And, um, I mean, this thing has solar panels, its own battery system, winch, uh, it's designed to haul cars or whatever you want. It's got an air conditioning. I mean, it's pretty posh. I mean, it's, it's, uh, if you were wanted to use this as a race car vehicle for, for going to the races, brand new tires. I just put on there, made it look like an emergency vehicle just to make it match. We welded these drag casters onto the back. Just a lot of reinforcement added to these lights and a rear camera. So this camera connects to the screen system in the ambulance and you can look out the back of this trailer. How sick is that, right? So look at that, we made the, uh, the thing match. So when it's going down the road, people just assume it's some kind of emergency vehicle. They've never seen anything like it. They don't know what it is. People ask me all the time, is that legal? The lenses are clear. There's no colored lenses there. There's nothing on this thing that says that it's anything other than just a red truck. You know, a lot of stuff's been done to the inside of this thing. We need to clean it up, but um, I think we were doing some work over there. That's where we got the cover off. But this screen here, you can see all these different things. We put in this seriously badass Apple CarPlay Sony system. Here's some of the controls. Um, it's just really awesome. The thing about it is, I'm not gonna lie to you, it doesn't go that fast. These things only go like 70 maybe. You know, now empty, if you don't have a trailer with 10,000 pounds in it, it'll go a lot faster. But, <clears throat> you know, this would be really cool if you did, uh, if you wanted to take it to the races or use it for cold, you know, hot shot, whatever, and you can live in it. And uh, when you park this thing, nobody bothers you. Nobody, nobody has ever come up to me and been like, knock on the window, excuse me, sir, you're gonna have to move your ambulance. Yeah, that doesn't happen. 
no one will give you any guff about this thing and that's what makes it cool and it's gonna break my heart to get rid of it but um, you know it's a heck of a system but from now on I'll be driving that I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna sell it for I think I'm gonna list it for 40,000 uh, I think that the truck and the trailer together with all the things that we've done to it, um, that would make me happy. So if you're interested in it and you'd like to take it before I put it up for sale, just contact me and uh, I can arrange. Right now it's located in Dallas, Texas, but I may be taking it back to Vegas, haven't decided. Um, it's ready to roll, there's nothing wrong with it, everything works. <clears throat> Comes with a ton of extra stuff I haven't pointed out. And then actually, <clears throat> pardon me, at my shop uh, in Vegas, I have a ton of uh, ambulance parts. I'll be listing that I could give you with it for free if you don't mind coming to get them. But, uh, you know, that's what I want because the, the truck, uh, if you took a 4300 truck like this and just took that box off of it and just offered this up to somebody to use as a tow truck or any other kind of truck, I mean, the truck itself is worth 20 grand without the box on it. And then a trailer like this, a, a race car hauler like that, is easily worth, you know, like 15 grand if you wanted to buy a trailer like that. That's a solid finished interior aluminum trailer. It's a really nice trailer. So uh, all the things that we've done to it, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't buy a trailer like that that has all the features on it that it has. So, you know, solar panels, the batteries, the winch, the lighting, the cameras, the, all those different things. They simply just don't make trailers like that. They don't make, you have to put all that stuff on yourself. And as far as a camper goes, I don't think you're gonna find a camper. I really don't wanna separate the two if I can help it just because the trailer's so unique and it just, it matches the ambulance. Um, but if somebody's interested in it, hit me up, 40 grand, it's yours. Quick follow-up, we decided to go ahead and put this thing together. I may do a whole video on this thing. I'm sure there's videos out there about these chairs. When you go to the Herman Miller Galleries and you look at this chair, this thing is like $8,000. But this is the Chinese knockoff of the chair. And I gotta be honest, when I, do my video on the thing if I do one. I wanna to go to the actual Herman Miller Gallery and look at a real one. Because this one, like, you know, one of the, the, like the things they talk about are the layers of wood. This has seven layers of um, plywood. You know, it's supposedly real leather. I mean, if I get really close, it's kind of dirty because it's a pebble leather because it's in the shop here and we were putting it together. These were kind of a pain in the ass to put together but it's very sturdy you know like i said i'm gonna do a whole video on it but it seems to be really well made for the money i like this better than a recliner because you can just sit on the ottoman and you can just kind of you know you do this do -do -do, sit down put your feet up and then you know i like it but my feet are dirty Ugh. but it's leather you know so I'm going to try this thing out a little while. We'll see how it does. What I'll probably do is a, uh, <laughs> I'll put a, you know, I'll put an Amazon link to this thing for if people want to order it. I mean, you're talking about six, 700 bucks. There's a couple of options, color options, and whether or not it's the premium upgraded version. They don't really explain what that is. I think better leather, uh, I don't know. Um, they make a tall version. This is the, I think this is the tall version I got which is like an inch and a half taller. <laughs> but um, so far, pretty happy with it. I mean, it's a comfy chair, nice wide seat. Now, my seat has gotten smaller, as you've noticed. I've lost some weight. Um, but I mean, this would make a great office chair if it just had a different base. And I know that they make base kits. Herman Miller doesn't, but there's a company out there that sells these kits to redo the base so that you can... Um, like sit upright a little higher and use it as an office chair. And I think I would really like to have one of these as an office chair. It's one heck of a cool chair. Um, the ottoman is huge, you know, it's a big, big ottoman. And the mid-century modern style is just, you know, this is a, you sit back in this, you have your glass of whiskey, you smoke your pipe, you know, your cigar, whatever, while you're, wife in a nice dress is, is making you a sandwich. <laughs> uh, 
the good old days, as they say. I don't know. I like this chair. It's a nice chair. Um, I think I'll probably buy another one. They make a like a not a red one, but it's like a burgundy wine. It's closest to red I'm gonna get. I think I might order that one as well. This one I I'm gonna keep here at the Texas shop. I'm gonna put it into my little office area as a because you could take a net. You could totally take a nap in this chair, no doubt about it. Like you could, like. Throw me a blankie. I could fall asleep in this. Yeah. I could. Yeah. Anyway. All right, so before I wrap up this video, I had made some comments on my Facebook pages about people coming to my shop and to my home. And uh, some people had, you know, said I was being kind of a jerk about it. And... Um, Here's the thing, uh, this shop here in Texas, this is a private shop. We're not open to the public. We don't deal with the public, okay? Um, it's not a public place. And I'm usually not here. Sometimes I'm here, usually not. I really don't like it when people drop in. Um, same thing goes with my house. My house is my home. It's not a public place. And I realize that a lot of you know where it is. That's fine. But I don't like when people come onto the property unannounced um, and just ring my doorbell or go walking around or taking pictures. I mean, it's my home. Now, I appreciate my fans. I love all of you. I thank you so much for watching these videos and things. And if you see me out in public, by all means, please come up and say hello. People see me in restaurants or stores, walking around events. That's 100%. I mean, just use your head, folks. But I've had people come to my house and go roaming around my property. And the other day, some people came in and they just like wandered into this other building that I have where, you know, my band was in there practicing. And they're like, hey, is Video Bob here? We're fans. We want to meet him. And uh, I'm like, they're like, no, he's out of town. But that's just not cool. Okay, and there are people on there going, well, that's what you get for being, you know, on YouTube and being famous and stuff. I'm like, I'm not famous. Okay, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm a guy who was on YouTube. Anybody can be, anyone can be on YouTube. You, your grandma, your dog, your cat, everybody can be on YouTube. It's not a big deal, okay? Just because, uh, let's face it, okay, like 25 million people have watched my videos. Okay, great. Does that mean you get to just come to my house? No. All right, so here's the rules of whether or not you know somebody or not. If you don't have their phone number, you don't know them. If they won't give you a ride to the airport, they are not your friends. That's how you know. So unless you have, if you have my phone number, you will text or call me and go, hey, Bob, I'm, I'll be, I'm in your area. I'm going to stop by. Is that cool? And then I will tell you whether or not that's cool. Uh, if you don't have that, uh, no, don't come to my house. <laughs> There's like five people that I know that have like my actual number and know how to get a hold of me and will come to my house. Everybody else is... <laughs> not invited unless I'm having a public event and I ask you and I can't believe that I have to make this statement no I haven't gotten the wall up yet I am working on getting the wall I'm trying to get some permits done because I don't want to do it illegally okay so I met with some various builders and they're like okay first we have to cut up the trees we have to put down a concrete foundation that's going to need a permit that's going to take some time then to do a stone masonry wall of six feet, we gotta have another permit for that. They have to come out and check the rebar and the concrete. And then you're gonna put electrical through the wall and, and all that other, and then that has to be permitted. And so he says, if I do it illegally, I could get it done like in a week, but it, otherwise it's gonna take many months and it's gonna cost a lot of money and I'm working on it, I'm working on it. And I want it more than ever now because aside from the homeless people and things that have wandered into my property and then just the random people that wander in my property, then I also have you, my fans coming to my, and people are like, hey, man, I'm coming to Vegas. I'm going to come meet you. I'm like, no, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm not. If you see me out and about, please come up and say hello. I would love to meet you. That's great. Okay? But when my wife is home by herself or whatever the situation, like, um, I can't believe I have to say this. And I can't believe that anyone out there would argue with me about this. But um, that's not cool. <laughs> Do not come to my house. Anyway, guys, I'm so relaxed in this chair. <laughs> all right it's just an update video i wanted to uh make for you guys because i haven't done a video like in forever and and i 
I know I should be doing them like daily and stuff, and I know you guys want stuff to watch. And I've noticed that there's not that much to watch out there. Like, I love to watch all the same guys that you like to watch. And um, it seems like, uh, you know, none of us are really posting like we used to. It's not as much to watch. I sat back and I watched, I rewatched the entire Sopranos series, and then I rewatched the entire Breaking Bad series. I'm looking for, like, good old shows to watch again because I'm not really happy with some of the new shows coming out. They kind of suck. Anyway, um, I'll try to post some new stuff. There's There might may or may not be anything exciting going on over here. It's pretty boring. I'm sitting in the middle of this warehouse in a lounge chair. Ah. <laughs>